there are different models of incarnation because every model that's been presented is being argued by philosophers that either it goes into a heresy or goes into something that is not totally incompatible with logic and reason. Okay? I mean, if you have a model where there is three gods, but they work together, somehow united, but there's three gods. So it falls into either tritheism or falls into partialism and other heresies. So which model, because Christian philosophers to this day, if you, if you study each one of them, see they're coming up with more and more models, new models. I should tell you why, because the previous models didn't really do the job of justifying that this actually fits with reason. Or you say that, or there's an alternative to that, which is there are refinements in understanding. Yeah. So and, which and, models and that, do you... And that's the way science works. You know, you create a more sophisticated model. Newtonian mechanics was replaced by quantum. No problem. Because because there was there were more nuanced, more fine un, um, understandings to what, what experiments. What incarnation makes sense to you? Um, Can you refine that? Yeah. Which one? Which out of <laughs> course, of course, obvious. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't. When you say models of um, models of incarnation, can you give me some examples of what you're thinking? Okay. So we have a tri-personal entity, God, in your belief. One of this person decides to come down and give up or limit himself or itself, limit himself, and then take on a human form, incarnate into human form. So you have the infinite merging with or changing into a finite. So that's the model. Okay? So you can have what they should do with consciousness, what they do with what exactly happens? Because when you have the infinite now takes on the form of a finite. Do you have a convergence between finite and infinite? Or do you have a merger? The, are they separate like this? Like no. how glass, the fact that water goes into a glass. <laughs> like oil and water don't mix, right? Yeah. So okay. two natures. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you have the infinite and finite remaining coexisting at the same time. Yeah. Or is the infinite mixing with the finite? Or finite mixing with the infinite? Imagine now you have the water becomes totally visible with the oil. So no longer oil anymore, it's just oil, or the vice versa. The oil becomes missing with the water and loses its properties and becomes the other one. You have two different natures. One nature is the infinite nature of God, perfect nature, and the other nature is imperfect nature of a human being, which is the creative nature of a human being. So when God, in your belief, becomes incarnate into a human nature, either these things should happen. The finite is merged with the infinite, yeah. So God is like 99% knowledgeable and 1% ignorant? Well, I think the, the classic Christian response to that, and that, that's what I'll give you, because I'm not going to claim to understand the mechanism, and that's not what I'm going to advance. Fair but, let's go for that. Yeah, the, the, the classic Christian response to that would, would be that he was 100% man and 100% divine. Okay, at the same time? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that means you have the infinite remaining infinite and finite remaining finite. There's never been an incarnation. What it is, in simple terms, you have God taken in an additional nature and keeping the additional nature. He hasn't lost any of his nature. To remain 100% God, you have to have that nature intact, 100%. Okay, re repeat that again. To say there is 100% God, 100% man, it means God has retained his divinity 100%. His nature has not lost. So Philippians 2 is wrong here in this case, so it goes against the scripture. Because it says Jesus' very nature, like God, humbled himself, made himself nothing, he emptied himself, right? But the philosophers are arguing differently, or the, the creed is arguing differently. Because emptying means emptying, limiting yourself from what you are, 100% divinity. If you keep side by side, so scripturally this is not valid, it's against scripture. Okay? So we have to say, you, you are now in a topical speculation from creed which is developed, which is not supported by scripture. So if you have 100% divinity remaining, and then 100% human being, or 100% um, tree, 100% stone, whatever. This is an additional nature that's been added. Now, what is this addition? This addition, God has taken in another form or a nature, but he's kept his godly form. So what does it mean he's added another nature? What does it mean in the first place? If, he has kept, if God is God 100% in his nature, you can't add anything to it because that is his nature. You cannot simply add something to God. If 
you take something away from God, then you've taken something away from God. Then he wasn't God in his own nature. But here, so you have now a, an additional nature attached to this. So it becomes more complex now. So you have a concept of God in which there are four natures or five. Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. So Trinity is actually no, five nature. The Holy Spirit incarnated himself, itself into a dove. The scripture says that. So you have a dove which is an additional nature to the Holy Spirit, human additional nature to the Logos and the Father. So you have five nature in one. So it's no longer like what God you, what, So what you do you identify the Logos as being? Logos according to the philosophers who propounded this idea long before Christian writers did, it's like That's a true. wisdom. That's correct. It's like a wisdom. Yeah. Someone's wisdom. Truth, truthful speech. Yeah. Yeah. Can, yeah can. But in John's Gospel, what is the Logos defined as? What is identified as? The Logos. A, yeah. How is Logos identified in the first Logos, chapter? Of Logos is defined by as Theos. So, yeah. in the beginning was the so Word, and the word, the word was with God, the and the Word was God. He was present with God in the beginning. And through Him all things were made, yeah. and without Him nothing that was made sure. was made. So yeah. when the Lord came to us through Moses, but grace and truth has been revealed through Christ Jesus. So, how does John identify the Logos? What's so, if you read the way that you've read, there is so you duality. So, that's a two-in-one God. Yeah. There is not, oh, sorry, not two in one God, sorry, mistake, two gods. Because in the beginning was God and there was another one which was also God. But how do, you, how do you view that text? How do you view that? So John presents two gods. Okay. The way you've read and explained. So I so, would take so, that. So John who would have been, correct me if I'm wrong, John who would have been a staunchly monotheistic Jew. Um, um, we don't know who John is. So the writer pre presents clearly. That's the problem. Well, with he knows he knows enough about Jewish culture. I mean, I've heard that before, and I, I reading reading the Gospel of John, I don't accept the argument he wasn't Jewish. He knows too much about Jewish culture. It's not about too much knowing Jewish culture. So the question is now. But the Jews at that time, but is, the Jews at that time would have been monotheistic, correct? Yeah, but not so, every Jew so, is a monotheistic Jew. Yeah, but so for him, for him to be a monotheistic Jew and to make the assertion that the the word was God, Logos, Eho, and Theos, how did how do you understand his understanding of that? Psalms 82 says God resides in the assembly of gods. This is the Jewish scripture. Yeah, but back to the point. How did you? I'm how, explaining. Yeah, but how? How would? How, what is? What is the point John is trying to make? There? John has a theological perspective. What he's trying to put Jesus as. I am saying John knows very well if he was a Jew that God, in the Jewish concept, presides in the assembly of gods. So what are these gods? Are they eternally with him? So Jewish monotheism is yeah, not but, what you think it is. But that, but that, but that John one passage. That's a direct allusion to what other passage in the Old Testament. In the in the beginning, what's the what's the reference? He's making a deliberate reference to an Old Testament book. Okay. What's the book? In the it's Genesis. Okay. No, no, no. Agree? Do you agree? Do you agree? In the beginning of what? I want to I want to I want to make sure no. we've got common ground here. Sure. In the beginning of what? The question of how. Let's let's analyze John one one. Okay. Are we talking about Genesis. In the, John one one. Okay. Yeah. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning of what? Clearly, this is a very faulty theology to start with. The very first verse is a philosophical mistake. I've understood. The way you present it. Okay, in the beginning of what? This God has no beginning. So, in the beginning of what? Well, if it's a direct allusion to um, Genesis 1, he's talking about creation. So in the beginning of creation. But God existed before the creation. Agreed. Yeah. So in the beginning was God. So in the beginning of creation was the Theos. And he's saying that the Word was with God. So, so he was present with God before creation. In the beginning, yeah. he was with God, right? Yeah. Right. So he's, he's saying so, he was present with so, God before so if creation. So if he was, because like, you said God was present before creation, so agree? If he was, so if he was with God, let me explain. Please. If he was the Word of God, a Word of God. Is the word of God or a word of God present with God all the time? It doesn't say a word of God, it says the word of God. How does it say? It says the word of God. How does it say? I can, get, I, can get, I can get a Greek dialogue out if you want, but it says it's the word of God. Okay. Now, here is a problem. You have to explain to me. 
Which word of God is Jesus? The which word of God is Jesus? The word of God. Yeah? That means all the words of God. Am I right in thinking the Quran identifies Jesus we, we come back as, to this as the word as well? Not the word of God. A word that God bestowed on men. Al Taha ila Maris. Just like God said to you, things were human create, be and things were. Like in the Genesis accounts, God says, let there be and there things were. Which words of God is Jesus? All of it or some of it? Well, from, from John 1, he's identified as the word of God. So all of it. Yeah. Right. God, does God the Father speak? Because whatever he speaks, it's only the Son speaking. Because it, the, the word is his, his word is the Son. So when he speaks, it's the Son speaking. So when John says, and the word was made flesh, how do you understand that? Let there be light. So the light, the word, let there be was made flesh in the creation. Light was made. Let there be creation, the creation manifested and, itself and dwelt from among, this and, word. And dwelt amongst us. Hmm? And dwelt amongst us. Yeah. So the word so, so the word that John is identifying as being present with God and equal to God before creation. Doesn't say equal to God. It says and the word was God. If that was the case no, when you say was God, there's a distinction made, and that's why the Jewish not Jewish, Jehovah's uh, witnesses, for example, I know, in their that, I know, I know they argue. No, no, it's why, why would they argue? I understand why that. would they argue? Because it doesn't exactly the same. Same words have been used for the beginning. The word God. So this is already a dilemma within Christian uh, sexual interpretation. Only, my, only, my, only with JWs. Okay. <laughs> grammatically. Yeah. Not about JW. I'm talking about grammatically. Just grammatically, they made a point. So I, I, I don't know Greek, but they've made a grammatical point that you, you need to iron out between yourself. I don't either, but I've got a diglot at home, and the diglot says, and the word was God, not a God. One says God presided with the assembly of God. You see, you can, you can, you can Listen, argue against it. Let me, let me finish my point. You can argue against it, but I am convinced that the actual interpretation of John 1, with, with beyond doubt, is that it says that the word was God, not a God. Let's, let's see your interpretation. Now, you, you might, you might look, wish look. to challenge John's gospel. Listen, you might wish to say, well, I'm, we don't know who I, it is. I'm saying, let's say this is what it says, right? Okay, fine. Okay. So, if all the words of God is below us, does the Father have any speech of his own? Can you speak? Because we find scripturally the Logos speaks to the Father. But the Father cannot speak. I'm not I'm thinking. You can have it inside. Yeah? The Logos speaks to the Father. But the Father cannot speak because his speech is now the Logos, all of it. So tell me how that communication happens. Well, as I say, um, let's go back to the passage. Um, go, go back. Yeah, let's, let's get it up so we can have a go. Because you identified all the words of God is the Logos. That means whatever God speaks, actually he's not speaking. The Father is not speaking. It's the Son who's speaking. So how does the Father communicate with the Son? Word, the translation of the Greek word logos is widely interpreted referring to Jesus, as indicated in the other verses later in the same chapter. You see, to me, that would be a consistent interpretation. Do you understand the word logos to mean to, um, to represent Jesus? That's what John wants it to be. Yeah. yeah. I have no problem you with your not... interpretation. Okay. I've asked you a question based on that interpretation. Okay. So please explain to me how does the Father communicate with the Son? When the communication medium is only the Son. Whatever speaks is the Son speaking, it's the Logos speaking. If Jesus is all of the Logos of uh, God, okay, I see the, point you're so making the Father will be speechless. You cannot uh, okay. have anything. Okay. I see the point you're making. Yeah. And he's got it, he's got it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah, Re reflect on that. Let me go and reflect. I'm not just going to blurt an answer yeah. out. So you have two options. Either he's a word of God, like in the Quran, Allah says, وَأَلْقَاهَا إِلَى مَرْيَمْ A word that he bestowed or sent down on men. Yeah? So Allah explains the similitude between Isa alayhi salam, Jesus, and Adam alayhi salam. Allah created from dust, Adam alayhi salam, yeah, and good. said, be, good. and he was. Because so the, 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 command the word of, has a function, doesn't it? Yeah, so the word... It's created. 
creative work. Wow. Exactly. The, the word creates the universe, the word creates the human flesh for Christ, and that's why he is called the word of God in, in Islamic understanding. He's not the word of God, he's a word that Allah sent to Mary. He's created What's the other term that's used? Educate me. Is it the, is it the word and spirit of Allah? Is, it, is, no, it, no. is there a reference to spirit? It says, وَرُوحٌ مِّنْهُ And a spirit proceeding, not proceeding, spirit from him. Like Allah says, وَجَمِيعٌ The universe, جَمِيعٌ مِّنْهُ Everything from him. So it doesn't mean it's part of him. The whole universe is from, you know, comes from Allah, but it's not mean it's part of him. So this kind of possessive um, words Allah use. You know, we have a, in grammar, I'm not sure what's the English terms, but in Arabic, mudaf and mudaf ilayhi. Yeah? So when I say my book, it's, it's, I'm possessing that book. It doesn't mean it's part of me. It's not part of me. It's that I'm possessing this book. So, so is, when God describes, for example, my um, uh, she camel, camel, naqatullah, the she camel of Allah, it doesn't mean it's part of Allah. When he says like uh, the Baytullah, the house of God, it's not even part of him. It's an attribution that is, it, it belongs to him. Yeah. Okay. So, they have independent power yeah. so, so what is the Islamic understanding of the term spirit, ruach? What is, what is the understanding of that? So there are, when you say, it's not ruach, so it's, uh, Allah ruach. used the word ruach, and it tells you, people ask you about ruach. Allah says, no. ruach is from the command of Allah, and knowledge of it is given very little. Okay? So this special ruh. So repeat that again. And knowledge. The, the knowledge of ruh yeah, yeah, yeah. has not been given enough to us because uh, okay. it will not be from the command. So, so it's a limited area. But of it's a command. But it's a command from Allah. In a what, what's dimension. the command? An amr is a command from Allah. So ruh comes from Allah as a command. It's, it's, it's something that is not like part of Allah. Yeah, it's, it's not part of Allah like it's part of His essence or anything. But that's but, that's ruh. Okay, so ruh. We use the translation spirit. You can use a spirit, but you can use also um, like the, the Quran can be called Ruh. Angel Gabriel, Jibrail al Islam is called Ruh. Because in the Greek it's, it's Numa, isn't it? In the Greek it's uh, Numa. Uh, Numa, yeah, yeah? Numa, Numa. Um, it, uh, also, it's, it's used in describing uh, breath, wind, air movement. Um, would you agree with that? Is it, is it true to no, say no, this, is, this is the Jewish people? Uh, you know when it says come on. Command meaning Allah's Allah's world of command, not in this one. In it's not a different world, but this is not of something that dimension. part of His essence or something. He's part of His command, right? I mean, I'm Rabbi, I mean, so, so that again, we're, we're staying with spirit, okay. correct? We're staying with ruach. Yeah. Ruach, ruach yeah. in the Christian concept yeah. is a person within Trinity. Correct. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. In Islam, God doesn't have other persons. Okay. So Allah is only Allah. But I'm fascinated to know what your, what your understanding of spirit is from an Islamic perspective. I'm under, I'm creation. How does it interact? What, what, does it proceed from Allah to, to creation? For example, when Allah created Adam and Islam, yep, yep. He instilled in him the ruh. Okay, the breath of life. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that's what the ruh Adam. Yep. Yeah, it's a created entity. Well, listen, Mansoor, you've given me much to uh, reflect on today. Yeah, but perhaps we can talk again uh, yeah, on this I, issue. I, I hope so. This is, this is my first time here at the park to, to speak to you. Well, you can you can call me Paul. Paul. Yeah, okay. it's not my name, but it's been a pleasure to meet you. Paul. Paul, nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Keep going. Keep the conversation. What it really makes a change for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 um, I adopt a much more con conversational style. Uh, I'm interested in learning. Um, so are we. Uh, and, um, I've if seen anyone thinks they know everything, yeah. they're, they're talking. They'll, they'll be humble. They'll be humble quickly. But um, it's been it's been a pleasure actually meeting you. Um, I've seen many videos of you online. I um, mean, so you and um, your, your interactions with Bob are actually the reason that I've come down here to uh, to, uh, to come, come uh, listen and speak. So um, thank you. Uh, I've enjoyed it. You can, you've, thank you've presented you. many challenges. I will I will go away and I'll look at the uh, the different models models of the incarnation. And um, perhaps next time we can come back and discuss John again in a bit more detail. Go and do some homework, some research, and uh, we'll take it from there. Sure. In the meantime, I mean, because you're doing comparison, look into the Islamic concept yeah. in more depth as well. No, no, I am. At the moment, I'm studying, uh, I'm reading up on uh, the history of Islam. Um, in particular, its involvement in Andalusia. So the Andalusian Caliphate, the Umayyad, and uh, what's the one before the Umayyad? Uh, can't remember. Anyway, so I'm looking up on the Islamic history and um, yeah, look forward to being educated by yourself again in the future. I look forward to learn from each other. Thank you for your time, okay, sir. You take care. Take care. Sir, what is Allah praying in?